do what you want to do with your life, right? Don't don't go be doing something you don't enjoy. Don't do something that's don't get locked into you know a, a car that you can't afford and doing something crazy because you need the money. Don't don't do that. Do what you want to do. Do what the f is it that you really want to do? Because if someone else is doing it, you can do it. You know, I mean, everybody makes their own path through this world, but a lot of people don't follow the path that they really f feel pulled to. You know, there's for whatever reason they got negative programming. You know, when they were kids, someone told them they couldn't do it, or told them to take the shortcut, or or take the uh, the, the sure route. That's a, a sad thing, man. When you talk to dudes, especially like talented dudes, and they don't follow up with what they want to do. Even if other people can't see through their filter of criticism, you're still driven by love. Every one of you is a piece of all that is. Every one of you. And if that critical mind comes up and says not good enough in any sense, there's a point where you have to stand back and say, that's not me. I am more than the program. And when you let go of that problem of self-criticism, you learn and experience for the first time in your life self-love. And why is this important? Because as I learned through years I could not love the people around me until I could learn to love myself. The glory of life on this planet cannot be built uh, by anything else in the universe than what you can do here. You are creators. Own your creativity. Own your spirit. It's not words. It's not devotion. It's a true knowledge. You are spiritual. And that is the opening of life. There are a lot of people who are biting their fingers in fear that they might lose their jobs. But there are few people who have decided within themselves, I'm going to make it. Some people aren't waiting to be cut. Some people are moving on their own because they feel within themselves, I've got what it takes to make it. They're not afraid about tomorrow because of how they see themselves, because of what they feel that they deserve, because of what they feel that they can create for themselves. Because these people have decided, as they look at the future, as they look at themselves, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, Nothing can stop you. Nothing. Have you ever given much thought to the idea that the spoils in life go to the risk takers? If you'll give it some thought, I think you'll come up with the same solution I arrived at. The survey indicated that 98% of the men in the country are looking for security in their work. That is, they're mainly interested in losing themselves deep in the warm, nourishing viscera of some large corporation, which is fine. I'm not knocking it. I'm just commenting on it. But these are not, as a rule, the risk takers. They're more the play it safers. And while they can have good and successful careers all their working lives, the chances are against they're hitting the big jackpot. Now the reason I say this is because this sort of life, as a rule, does not encourage a man to do much more than he has to do. And he'll usually spend his free time, which comes to something like 72 hours a week when he's neither working nor sleeping, in pursuits not calculated to help him get ahead in the world. Now the man who risks his spare time writing a book, painting pictures, fiddling with inventions, continuing his education, is generally the one in this kind of milieu who will advance above his fellows. But the man who risks all of his time on a goal he wants to reach, on a dream in his heart, who stakes his livelihood and the livelihood of his family upon his own brains and the proper use of his time, and tackles the world single-handed, here's the risk taker to whom the spoils will generally accrue. Now, I'm not talking about the impractical dreamer and stargazer. I'm talking about the man of action who gets out and raises the dust in the world. He might take some king-sized pratfalls and be snickered at by friends and relatives of a more conservative bent, but he'll usually make the grade if he stays with it and earn their admiration, if not envy, before he's through. You know, one of the biggest factors in his favor is the size of the group he belongs to. According to the most reliable figures I can find, this risk taker belongs to only about 2% of the population. And since he's generally working on an idea that will in some way serve the big 98%,
the odds swing rather favorably to his side. Additionally, a man on his own must think. He must devote more of his days to thinking. Conversely, the man with a good steady job who's familiar with his work and surroundings can go along pretty well from day to day without doing any creative thinking at all. And as I said, we have a tendency to do no more than we have to. Anybody who spends a good deal of his time thinking is going to come up with a good idea once in a while. The law of averages is definitely on his side. And if you think about it a minute, you realize that he only needs a few, maybe only one really good idea to make it big. Now, the more you think about it and analyze it, the more it makes you think that what appears to be the risk taker really isn't nearly as big a risk taker as you might imagine. The cards are stacked pretty well for him from several important standpoints. But as I said in the beginning, the spoils definitely go to the risk taker. Life is full of hidden contradictions. One is that the man who thinks he's playing it safe really isn't. And the man who seems to be taking the greatest risks, considering the law of averages, is playing it safest. If you just make a decision, it can be sometimes the day that starts you on a brand new journey. Now, some decisions are incidental and some are small and some, you know, are, are part of a working day. But sometimes decision making can be one of the most important days of your life. Maybe a decision you've postponed and postponed and now you understand the penalty of postponing that decision. You've got to do something and finally you come to the conclusion today is the day. I now decide. And whether you decide on a new direction, whether you decide on a refinement in philosophy, uh, whether you decide to act when before you haven't acted, uh, you decide on a, on a series of things that you're going to do. Uh, deciding can be a, such an incredibly important, very exciting, inspirational day. Also, deciding sometimes starts the process of lifting our self-esteem. Sometimes when you look back on it, uh, the day that you decided was just about as exciting as the day when you finally accomplished the project. That when you finally made the decision, you finally got the monkey off your back, as we say in English. You finally you know, got through whatever barriers kept you from making that decision, and finally you made a decision. And now it seems like the sky is blue, and the air is clear, and your mind is ready, the adrenaline starts to flow, things start to happen to you uh, from that moment of decision. So that can be an incredible source of inspiration. Now, if you don't follow through, it's not going to last all that long. If you decide and then, you know, postpone and, and you decide and but you don't still don't get to it for a week or a month or a year, you know, soon all that energy and that source of inspiration is all dissipated. So deciding is inspiring, but not for that long. But once you decide, it can be a very powerful day. But now, of course, now you must follow through. But if there's some things you've been postponing, uh, some decisions you have just, you know, hadn't gotten to, uh, I would ask you to just, you know, take out your journal and just go through, you know, what have I been postponing that's not going to be better for my health, it's not going to be better for my future, it's not going to enhance my finances. Uh, maybe a problem needs to be solved. I got to decide when I'm going to do it and, and, and how I'm going to proceed. I need to get to it. I promise you, if you'll go through some of that list uh, and start making those decisions, your inspiration will start to flow and those could be very critically important, exciting days. Uh, indecision is the thief of opportunity. Uh, indecision means the door is still closed. Uh, indecision means the opportunity waits. Uh, indecision means what could be is postponed or may never be. And you know that those are all the penalties of indecision. And sometimes we can't make a snap judgment. We can't decide immediately on something so important. But after a while, after a while, we must understand sometimes the heavy penalty of putting off our, our decision making. So one source of inspiration, deciding. Nothing is so embarrassing as watching someone do something that you said could not be done. People who embrace possibility thinking are capable of accomplishing tasks that seem impossible because they believe in solutions. When you believe you can do something difficult and you succeed, many doors open for you. Big thinkers are specialists in creating positive, forward-looking, optimistic pictures in their own minds and in the minds of others. If you embrace possibility thinking, your dreams will go from molehill to mountain size, 
And because you believe in possibilities, you put yourself in position to achieve them. The winners in life think constantly in terms of I can, I will, and I am. Losers, on the other hand, concentrate their waking thoughts on what they should have done or what they don't do. If you believe you can't do something, then it doesn't matter how hard you try because you've already lost. If you believe you can do something, you have already won much of the battle. The first step in becoming a possibility thinker is to stop yourself from searching for and dwelling on what's wrong with any given situation. Sports psychologist Bob Rotella recounts, I tell people, if you don't want to get into positive thinking, that's okay. Just eliminate all the negative thoughts from your mind. And whatever's left will be fine. If possibility thinking is new to you, you're going to have to give yourself a lot of coaching to eliminate some of the negative self. Talk you may hear in your head. When you automatically start listing all the things that can go wrong or all the reasons something can't be done, stop yourself and say, don't go there. Then ask what's right about this. That will help to get you started. And if negativity is a really big problem for you and pessimistic things come out of your mouth before you've even thought them through, you may need to enlist the aid of a friend or family member to alert you every time you utter negative ideas. One of the best ways to cultivate a possibility mind set is to prompt yourself to dream one size bigger than you normally do. Let's face it, most people dream too small. They don't think big enough. Henry Curtis advises, make your plans as fantastic as you like because 25 years from now they will seem mediocre. Make your plans 10 times as great as you first planned and 25 years from now you will wonder why you did not make them 50 times as great. If you push yourself to dream more expansively, to imagine your organization one size bigger, to make your goals at least a step beyond what makes you comfortable, you will be forced to grow and it will set you up to believe in greater possibilities. Most people want their lives to keep improving, yet they value peace and stability at the same time. People often forget that you can't improve and still stay the same. Growth means change. Change requires challenging the status quo. If you want greater possibilities, you can't settle for what you have now. When you become a possibility thinker, you will face many people who will want you to give up your dreams and embrace the status quo. Achievers refuse to accept the status quo. As you begin to explore greater possibilities for yourself, your organization, or your family, and others challenge you for it, other possibility thinkers across the country and around the world are thinking about curing cancer, developing new energy sources, feeding hungry people, and improving quality of life. They are challenging the status quo against the odds. And you should, too, 